This video demonstrates the process of using the GNU debugger through NetBeans to debug a C++ program. This demonstration assumes that a remote Linux server has already been configured as shown in a previous video. And this one uses an existing project to demonstrate the use of the debugger. First, I'm going to connect to the remote host by clicking on the terminal icon and it's going to ask me for my password. So I'm going to type in my password. And once I'm connected to the remote host, I'm going to open an existing project by browsing to the folder where my process is. Uh, in this case, I'm going to pick up XSS3 as a project I want to open. That opens up the project in NetBeans. I'm going to drill in to my source files and open up uh, my source file in my source file, I want to step through the process and look at the variables in a method called pass by reference. So I'm going to go to pass by reference method and I'm going to set a breakpoint there on the first line of the method. To set a breakpoint, simply click on that line number and that will set a breakpoint and you'll notice that the line turns um, with a red background indicating that a breakpoint has been set. Next, I'm going to run the program through the debugger. In order to run the program through the debugger, click on the Run Through the Debugger option. That'll build the program if necessary and start it through the debugger. And when the debugger starts, you will see um, the output starting. You might get a warning that says, the GNU debugger failed to set the controlling terminal. That's okay, ignore that warning. And now the test program has started running. Usually it's convenient to have the call stack, which shows the different methods that are being called. Pull the tab out separately so that it's easy for you to see the call stack along with the variables that are associated with the call stack. In this case, my call stack is currently in this method called pass by reference that is up here. And there are only two different, um, and there's only one variable that is defined here. So that's what the, um, the call stack is showing. That's namely the string. It is also handy to see the data types of these variables. So I'm going to, um, right click and also say show the type of the variable. So in this case, the type of this variable happens to be a uh, std string and it's a reference. Notice the ampersand at the end of that. You can also, also go back to the previous stack, uh, which is where the main method, so the main method called pass by reference. And you can see the different values and the parameters there uh, that are set up in the main method. And notice that um, this parameter is being passed by reference. So you should be able to make a mental model that SDR, the um, uh, parameter there, corresponds to the argument main SDR, that is the string defined in the main method. And you should be able to make a reference between these two saying that these two objects are essentially referring to the same string. So because of that, when I change the value of SDR by assigning a string called dummy to it, which I'm going to do by stepping through the code. So you can click the step over icon to go step by step or line by line in your source code. So when I click over it, notice that the value of SDR has changed to dummy. And if you go back to main, you will also notice that the main string, which was the formal argument to that method, its value is also changed because they essentially point to the same string. You could continue to step through the code just like it is shown here. So now I'm going to step over to the next line. It executes the line and of course you will see an output in the output tab that says pass by reference call which was the output that was printed by that line of code there that just got executed. Then I'm going to continue to step over. It'll return back to the main method and finally main method will finish by returning zero back to the call. And if you're done debugging, you can just continue with the rest of the execution by pressing the continue uh, button, which will continue executing the program until the program terminates or if it hits another breakpoint. So you can now use the debugger, inspect the methods being called, 
look at the sequence of arguments and parameters being passed to the different methods and you can use that information to troubleshoot programs and to be able to tell errors in a program. The debugger is also useful for troubleshooting exceptions that might occur in a program. So if you notice an exception, run it through the debugger and it'll stop at the point where the exception occurs so you can inspect the call stack, look at the variables and try to figure out what the error in logic is and appropriately fix it um, by using the information from the debugger. And debugger is your best tool to troubleshoot programs and you should get very comfortable with using the debugger for troubleshooting programs in material what the programming language you're using is.